This year's theme for 2019 for the meeting is Globalization 4.0 and shaping the architecture of the next wave of globalization, which is the Industrial Revolution, the fourth Industrial Revolution, which you literally wrote a book on. Can you tell me what makes up the fourth Industrial Revolution? We are living in a time of multiple technological innovations. I just mentioned artificial intelligence, blockchain, and you could add and add. And all those technologies together will fundamentally transform the world, not just business models, but economies, society, politics, and so on. So when we, spoke about, when we speak about uh, globalization 4.0, we want to address the global architecture which is needed in this new context of the fourth industrial revolution. And what was the issue with the last wave of globalization? Well, we see it already now. So there are so many issues like inequality, trade wars, and I could go on and on. So um, the danger is that we deal with those issues, we address those issues with uh, patchwork policies. Uh, we try uh, to find simple solutions for very complex issues. So what we want to do is to show, no, the whole complexity has to be addressed and the new context has to be addressed. And this isn't a new problem. You wrote about this in 1996, the black backlash against globalization. So what solutions do we have now that will make this round better? We don't know, actually. Um, we know, for example, that the fourth industrial revolution has a tendency to favor innovation, to favor capital at the detriment of labor. So we have to think how we can create a better equilibrium, for example, through new tax systems, uh, through incentives, and particularly through uh, education, reskilling and upskilling uh, to prepare the people for the skills which are needed tomorrow. And you think blockchain will be a big part of that? We don't know yet. So, the last verdict is out. I know it's very fashionable, but uh, I have my doubts in many respects. Are there any other technologies that will help lessen the economic inequality? Um, of course. Um, if, you, if you look at um, the new um, possibilities in um, uh, communications combined with artificial intelligence, just think of um, the new ways we have in education. So we can give access to the best knowledge, to the best training, uh, to people somewhere in a far out corner of Africa, for example. So uh, those technologies could help to um, bridge the gap, but those technologies could also very much widen the gap if we do not take the necessary measures today. And what we're, we're talking about the next wave of globalization, but we seem to be in a downtrend of, of a deglobalization right now. What is responsible for that? I would, I would um, uh, reject uh, this argument. Um, I think we have to make a differentiation between globalization, which is a fact, and globalism. Let mm -hmm. me come first to globalization. I think the world of tomorrow will be even more globally integrated because we are moving much more into a digital world, into a virtual world. And um, digital flows do not know borders, uh, so they don't have to cross borders. So we speak about global integration. Globalism is something different. Globalism means that all our policies should be subject to the so-called neoliberal um, forces of global markets. And here, I think the experience which we have seen is that, of course, we have to uh, have a multilateral, open, rules-based world, but we also have to make sure that we do not destroy uh, national social coherence, because national social coherence is the pre prerequisite for democracies. And what do you think is the biggest threat to global economic stability right now? I think it's the imbalances which we have. And it's not only the imbalance in the trade sector. We have uh, imbalances, for example, in the financial system with uh, 250 uh, uh, trillion plus um, uh, uh, credits. Uh, we have um, imbalances uh, certainly also uh, related to technological progress. And I could go on and on and a system, and globalization is a system. It's a global system uh, to prepare together the future. 
um, we have to address those imbalances. We have to, particularly, we have to address the imbalance of, um, uh, let's say, the social gap inequality. So you mentioned trade imbalances. Are trade imbalances a problem? Yes, um, they are a problem. Um, not as such, but if the uh, trade balances get into a dimension which uh, stretches the system and which creates, uh, let's say, uh, risks, um, then I think we have to uh, rebalance the situation. And that's the whole question of trade wars at the moment. And is that, are we moving in the right direction of rebalancing with what's happening now? No, we will see. Uh, I, in, in the economy, you have sometimes the, uh, the notion of um, disruptive innovation. And I see in some countries um, um, a element of disruptive um, innovation. Uh, we, and we see a lot of disruption. We don't see yet the innovation. How do we replace, let's say, an unbalanced system by a system where really everybody profits from and where we again in a good exchange of um, global goods, not only physical goods, but I'm thinking also of intellectual property, I'm uh, thinking of e-commerce and so on. We have to integrate trade much more into an overall system. I'm not an unconditional, let's say, advocate of uh, just free trade. Yeah. Yeah, because if you look what happened now in, in many countries, is we see a rebellion of those who have been left behind. Mm -hmm. um, take uh, what has happened in the election in Mexico, uh, take uh, what has happened in the election of Brazil. Of course, yeah. it was a different uh, group who at the end um, came into government, but um, both um, were driven very much by those parts of the population which had been left out in um, the globalization process. So we have to find this balance between uh, keeping an open world and on the other hand, uh, keeping our national contracts um, um, alive and to make sure that we, we, we maintain social cohesion inside a given country. But how do you do that? I think it needs not corrective measures, it needs proactive measures, for example, education, giving everybody uh, equal chances um, in the professional life, um, having a high gender parity, all those issues contribute to a stronger uh, social cohesion. And if you have all those things, then free trade is great. Yeah, then free trade is great. Um, but um, you may hear also in, in, in what we see, for example, in Europe, um, is um, uh, the concern that the cultural tissue of, uh, of the different countries is undermined. So um, you have not only to look at the social uh, dimension, you also have to look at the cultural dimension because the cultural uh, dimension provides the identity to the people. And that's the reason why migration is such a sensitive issue because people feel not so much that uh, it takes away the jobs. I think if they feel it takes away their cultural identity.